You're on 102.1 FM, ACCC Community Radio in Alice Springs and Tennant Creek on a Friday afternoon, and I hope you're having a good one. My name is Lindsay. This is Eruption, hard rock and metal show, and I'll be with you until 3 o'clock this afternoon. We just heard three tracks there. At the top was Stalker out of New Zealand, Wellington to be precise, and their new track, Intruder, which closes the album they're releasing today, Black Magic Terror. Hope you enjoyed it. In the middle, classic Morbid Angel. I've been listening to a fair bit of Morbid Angel lately, so I've played a couple of their tracks on the show. Uh, That track we heard came off the 1995 album Domination. It was Where the Slime Live, really at the height of their worldwide fame in the mid-90s then. Not all fans love that album. They had a string of death metal classics behind them by that stage, Uh, but I think it's still worth a listen in my opinion, so I thought I'd throw it in there. Hope you enjoyed it as well. And the final track we heard was from Brisbane band Wartooth, who are easily one of the best thrash metal bands in Australia currently. We heard Sabotage. Now, if you're not familiar, Wartooth absolutely blazed onto the Aussie thrash scene with their four-track EP, Virus, back in 2016. In the years since, they have travelled the nation playing shows, supported acts like Ross the Boss, Metal Church and Voivod, and were even set to support Sacred Reich this year. Unfortunately, that's been postponed for the time being. And in 2020, finally got to release their debut album, Programmed Dichotomy. And although uh, wearing proudly the influences of bands like Testament, Overkill, and Megadeth, uh, they offer a fresh sound, and it's damn electrifying. So it's absolutely great to have the drummer from Wartooth, Wally Napstein, join me on Eruption today. Uh, Wally, thanks so much uh, for coming on Eruption, and I cannot wait to get my hands on the disc when it finally arrives out here in Alice, mate. Yeah, thanks for having me on, mate. It's uh, an honour to be here, and I really appreciate you reaching out to us. And um, yeah, we we got that CD sent off, I think, yesterday or the day before, so it should be there next week. Hopefully no troubles with the postage situation. No, we're pretty good out here, and the T-shirt as well, mate, also. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it all comes in a neat little package. Yeah, you got to do you, you got to do the full package, mate. Uh, Wally, for listeners unfamiliar, in your own words, what is the essence of your band Wartooth? Well, as we say at the start of every live show, we are Wartooth and we play thrash metal. Um, but in broader terms, basically, we're just a thrash metal band. Like you said, been going for about seven years. We started in the garage, 2012, 2013, and progressed into shows, you know, 2014, 2015. And in the last probably 12, 18 months or something, we've, we've sort of evolved and, you know, started to become more um, active on social media and started building communities with people, you know, talking about contemporary social issues and mental health and other interpersonal struggles. So maybe not a typical rock star sort of lifestyle that we're aiming for, but really just enjoy talking to fans about actual problems that we face and, you know, including that in the music and all that sort of stuff. So it's really fun. Yeah, look, it's it's one of the things that's very evident, and it is certainly what I love about Wartooth. Uh, it comes across is that supreme dedication. You really embrace your fans. You like to give them the full package as a band, you know, the music, of course, uh, but also ex- excellent videos, merch, and I can only assume quality live performances. I haven't seen you guys, of course, but just going off that dedication, it seems what that's what you guys are all about, eh? Yeah, definitely we... We spent, like I said, you know, we we spent four or five years playing shows before we even really worried about doing any serious recording. And we, we got a lot of experience. And, you know, like you mentioned earlier, we played with a few international bands over the last three or four years as well. But at the end of the day, you know, that's what we wanted to do when we first started. And so all we aimed to do was just to put on killer live shows, you know, leave it leave it all on the stage, give it everything you've got because, you know, people are paying their money to come through the door and they just want to see you, you know, carve up and you just have so much energy and it's just so much fun. You can't, you can't hold anything back. You just got to let it all go. And like you said, you know, we get a good response from the fans and that's, that's really what we want playing shows and doing everything else we do. And look, I know you got the album out. And I do want to talk about that, but mate, the videos in particular, you've got a YouTube channel, and I must urge everyone to subscribe to the Wartooth YouTube page. The production value on your videos is incredible, mate. Is that done with in house by you guys? Um, yeah, most of them. Uh, what have we done? We've done the, the, the most recent one, "As Darkness Comes," which is the closing track of the album. 
Uh, yeah, Andy made that one himself. And the one before that was Slave to the Grind. We filmed all that on Australia Day, actually. That was a good time. Uh, we were at my house. We've got the, the work van out the front where he's standing on top of that one doing the solo. And we had the GoPro set up. We were shooting that one. And we went down to my office at work and we were shooting down there. So that was really fun. Uh, we, yeah, like I said, we did that one ourselves, but it was basically put together by my partner's uncle, who basically does movie making sort of full time for bands and stuff like that. And then we also had the Venom Head video as well, which we outsourced that one simply for time reasons. But um, we really try and embrace the DIY mindset. And like you said, doing it ourselves, we get to you know create those skills and build those connections and it really helps to put yourself into the music and into the videos. It really helps to get your message across the right way, which is something we have sort of struggled with in the past using other video makers and artists to, to make artworks and things like that. You, you want to try and get your message across, but you're sort of working through someone who may not fully understand. So sometimes it's easier to try and do it yourself and then you actually get exactly what it is that you want when it comes to videos and the songs and merch and everything really yeah i liked it mate it was uh, it's crea- it's high quality and creative as well now you're part obviously of the brisbane thrash metal scene and metal scene more broadly um how is it there are there venues and radio stations pretty supportive there in brisbane currently yeah we've been on the, another radio station down in brisbane for triple z with um michelle the metal maiden and you know she was really supportive you know she she supported us for the long time we've been in brisbane she's a little bit older than us so she's been around the scene a lot longer than what we have but the scene is really supportive you know there's lots of bands as you you played a few earlier laceration mantra and a couple of others and the thrash uh, scene in particular when we first started out 2015 2016 there was a good solid four bands going but over the last couple of years they've slowly dropped off due to you know lifestyle changes and change of direction and things like that but in the last couple of years other bands have come up and replaced them so now we've got a band called odious and a couple of others who are coming in to replace those other bands that fell off like caustic attack and Durain. and so the community is still there the bands are still there and the bands are still there and everyone's really supportive and yeah it's, it's a good place to be i have caustic uh, attack and Durain sort of fallen away have they yeah, well, Caustic Attack, uh, we, we, their main guy, Tim, um, he left the band or he got kicked out of the band, whatever, mm. and then he joined us and he recorded on Thrash Attack, actually did the big tour with us in 2017, and then we parted ways and he's come back and played a couple of shows for us since. We're still really good friends. Him yep. and Andy work together, so they get along really well. And, um, yeah, Durain, I think it was last year, maybe the year before, they I know the main guy just sort of, he said he just lost the interest or the passion. And, you know, I feel like that happened to a lot of people when they get to 30, maybe 33, around that age where they really have to choose, okay, what do I want to do with my life? And I've been doing this band thing for a long time and it's still just a little club thing. It hasn't really evolved to being maybe a, a, a job or something yeah. that actually pays a bit of money. And especially when you've got, you know, maybe partners or children who are pulling you away saying you know we need more time we need more money in this relationship and at, at the end of the day you know maybe you've just got to make that choice yes well, the band was just a fun thing i was just a kid when i started but now it's time to move on and be an adult yeah it's but, tough man a young man's game sometimes isn't it <laughs> yeah yeah but that, that's why we really you know had to think about it and go well if we're gonna do this thing for a long time you know we've got to set it up smart and so like i said over the last couple of years we've really evolved and change the mindset of like oh let's just play shows all the time to okay let's actually you know make some products that we can sell to our fans and connect with them and build a a good fan base and actually try and build a solid foundation to at least make a little bit of money or at least recoup the cost so my missus isn't sitting there saying you know why are you putting all this money into the band and going out and doing this and (laughs) never being here you know because it's got to support your life really and support your lifestyle whatever you choose that to be that's right, and you have got the album out now, War Tooth. It's been a few months, I think about six months. So it's called Program Dichotomy and available on a range of formats with brilliant merch options as well from the War Tooth Bandcamp page. 
And I understand, Wally, you've had a pretty good reception from reviewers and fans worldwide. Yeah, man. It was it sort of blew us away. Like, when we finished recording back in September last year, and we'd, we were so spent, you know, because we'd spent so long writing and demoing and recording, and just so good to have the recording done. And then we got the mixes back, and you just feelings inside you're like this is so good you don't even care what other people think you're just so proud to have the product that you wanted in your hands and then when it came to setting up the launch and everything in april you know we were gonna we we didn't have any other members at the time and we were planning it in about january so we planned to just have this little party sort of thing play a couple of acoustic songs and just sort of more just celebrate like with our closest fans in brisbane um like this is the thing that we've made, maybe not a traditional album launch show, like with the, the, the live music and everything, but we just wanted to sort of celebrate the fact that we'd done it because we'd been working at it so long. And then the coronavirus came along and sort of ruined our party. So instead we did a Facebook live stream and that was absolutely unreal. You know, we'd set up in my garage with some acoustic guitars and learnt some um, live streaming software really quickly and put together this awesome little live stream acoustic gig and um yeah all our fans absolutely loved it you know we really i feel like we were one of the first people to sort of embrace the live stream thing before uh you know sort of took off with the coronavirus but that was really fun and that helped us you know sell a bunch of albums to people who had been sitting on the fence and since that time in april we've just been talking to people in america and selling cds over there and canada and new zealand and europe like every second country in Europe, you know, someone bought an album. So it's, it's really cool to get a good response. And these people, they're just so passionate, you know, you hear back from them when they get it. They're like, it's like their whole, whole life was revolving around this CD coming to their door and then it finally arrived and they're so over the moon. And it's just amazing that you can, you know, you can reach people like that with your music. You know, you just think you're a little small time band, not doing a whole lot, but you're touching people on the other side of the world. It's really powerful stuff. Yeah, that's absolutely right, mate. And it is noticeable, like, all the people sending in photos when they get their merch and CD. And, you know, that's something that, uh, you know, it's really difficult to attain is that uh, dedication from fans. And I think Wartooth are uh, starting to get that. It's um, it's good to see. It's great for an Australian band to have that kind of following around the world. And uh, you guys have got a fair bit to say as individuals. I know you do some uh, Facebook sort of um, talks and things like that. Uh, what are the key lyrical themes that you wanted to express on on the album? Well, the whole the whole point of the album there, the program dichotomy, the red and the blue, it really just draws a message down to the fact that, you know, we're so we're so against each other as a society. There's so many parties and groups of people who are literally just opposing each other because that's what they were taught to do, not actually, you know, listen to other people's perspectives and maybe take on board something that may not be known to you. Um And so we really just wanted to get the message across that you don't need to be programmed to be the way you are, you know, to exist on one side of society and disagree with people on the other side. It's really okay to just sit somewhere in the middle and drift from time to time and, you know, be open-minded to to new ideas and be open-minded to other people's opinions because it's causing such a division where we literally just have to hate the other person because they're not on our team. And it just... When you think about it, it really doesn't make a lot of sense. But a, a prime example, and we've got a couple of songs about politics, is the whole concept of politics really is just bag out the other guy mm. to prove I'm not as shit as what he is. But at no stage are you actually saying what good you are or what good you're going to do. And that's the song Sabotage you played earlier. That The title says it right there. Like, I'm just here to, to sabotage the other guy. But in actual fact, if you're getting elected, you're sabotaging your, yourself and your your community that you're serving because you never actually plan to do anything good. You just didn't want to lose. You know what I mean? So yeah, your, your, your thoughts that you're expressing there remind me of, um, uh, there's a, a well-known American journalist. Uh, he writes for what Rolling Stone and he covered a lot of the Trump campaign, Matt Taibbi. And he talks yeah. about, uh, um, what's what he calls uh, packaged outrage, which is like curated outrage just for, you know, a social media user. And it's become a fairly well-known concept. And what you're saying kind of reminds me of that. I don't know if you've heard of him or not. No, I haven't heard of him. But um, I know Andy wrote the song. It was about Tony Abbott, basically, when he when he was coming into the 
coming into Parliament and stuff back a few years. And this year, it's been perfect for all the, the crap that's going on in America. Just like the the presidential debates, you know, it's not even a debate about politics. It's just, just shit-slinging. Like, oh, yeah. you, you didn't do this when coronavirus started, and so therefore you you shouldn't be the president. But then the other guy's like, well, your team wanted to do this, and that would have been the dumbest idea ever. So you shouldn't be elected. And at no stage are they saying what they're going to do good for the next three, four years to serve the country. And it's hilarious because I'm talking to fans in America who are sitting there watching it going, how the hell are we going to survive and do anything when we've got these two knobheads who are up there arguing and not actually going to you know, say that they're going to do anything progressive for the country? And it, it just... Like and people are voting for them, and there's maybe there's people who are mad who actually support them, and they're so passionate about their side. But going back to the program dichotomy thing, they're not actually listening and and creating their own opinion. They're just like, well, I'm a conservative, so go him, or I'm a Republican, go him, you know. And they just, it just yeah, it boggles my mind. Like I try and be as open minded as possible, but. Yeah, some people really struggle with that, I think. <laughs> well, good on you, Wally, mate. Your passion comes right through, and it's there in the music, and sometimes we just need to get the let out, and that's exactly what you guys do, uh, Wartooth. Fantastic album, mate. You've done really good, and I, like I say, I just can't wait to get the CD. I'm going to have to do my own photo, mate. I'll send you for sure uh, once I've got something, all right? That sounds great, man. Yeah, really appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. Look, um, as I said earlier, I've been talking to Wally. He's the drummer in Wartooth, Brisbane band. They've got a new t- new album out, Program Dichotomy. Head to the uh, Wartooth Bandcamp page now to get your copy and some merch. And Wally, mate, thanks for coming on Eruption. I'm going to play another one of your tracks. No worries, mate. Yeah, everyone turn it up. It's uh, the only way to listen to it. Nice stuff, mate. Stick around. Uh, don't uh, stay on the line, and we'll talk afterwards. But for the moment, this is Wartooth and a track called Venom Head. Mm-hmm. 